Hello, my name is Lynn Smith and I'm the Senior Community Education Officer with the Residential Tenancies Authority. The role of the RTA is a government organisation that oversees the renting laws in Queensland. So whether you're renting a house or a unit or a movable dwelling in a caravan park or renting a room, all parties involved in a tenancy have rights and responsibilities. As today's topic is about what happens in finding accommodation which is outside the guidelines of what the RTA does, we have invited today an expert from the real estate industry to share information with us. Nick Brown is a trainer with the Real Estate Institute of Queensland and also an experienced licensed real estate agent. So welcome to today, Nick. Thanks, Lynn. Always a pleasure. So Nick, if I'm a first time renter or I haven't rented for a while, where would I go to find rental accommodation? Lynn, there's various methods most landlords and agents use when promoting a rental property. Um, going to the internet is probably the number one on the list, looking at prominent websites used by many of the agencies. Um, sometimes landlords and agents place advertisements in the local newspaper, depending on the area. Um, going into the offices, getting a copy of their rental list and having a chat with the property manager also. Um, if you're a student, you might want to have a chat with the university or the college that you're attending um, because they'll have some contacts for uh, accommodation in the nearby area. Um, word of mouth from family and friends can always help, uh, particularly if someone has driven past a property with a for rent sign out the front. So most tents will have a wish list as to what they would like to rent and then comes the practical list of the needs versus affordability. A quick tip for tenants applying for a property is to make sure you inspect the property first and make sure it meets your housing needs. Things that you might want to consider. Your budget. How much can you afford? The area where you are wanting to rent. Do you need to be close to transport, shops, schools or work? Who will you be renting with? Will you be looking to share with others? What other costs are involved? Things such as like your electricity, gas, phone, internet and possibly water charges. When do you want to be moving in by? How long do you want to rent for? Is there something that I must have? And this might be like a fenced yard, air conditioning or a lock up garage. Can I maintain a pool or a large garden? And what furniture do I have or do not have and whether it will fit? A good practical tip is to take a tape measure with you to measure areas such as your fridge and washing machine space. If you have a large couch, will it fit through the front door? If you have a large four wheel drive, will it fit under the garage door? Ask questions to see what is also included, whether there's an actual phone connection available or what broadband facilities are available. So Nick, once you have your list ready and you've found a property that you would like to view, what is the next step? Uh, first port of call would be contacting the manager or the landlord to make an appointment. Uh, remember the property may still have someone in it, so they may have to make a time to get you through. Um, it might be a private view, it might be an open house where there's a number of tenants coming at once, just depending on how it's structured. Um, most likely you'll probably meet on site at the property uh, at the agreed time. Uh, remember, you may not be the only person viewing, so uh, it's best to be on time and be prepared. Make sure you might have the application and your ID with you as well. Um, particularly if there's a shortage of accommodation in the price range of the area that you're looking in. Once you have viewed the rental property and you find that it's in good condition and it meets your housing needs, the next step will be to apply for the rental property. So Nick, what is involved with the tenancy application process and what information will I need to provide? Lynn, the application form provides the manager or landlord with information about yourself, uh, where you currently live, your contact details, tenancy history, where you work, etc. Um, they'll also want to see copies of ID, uh, such as a driver's licence, passport, references, current or previous landlord references and, and details of the agency they can have a chat with or, or other landlord, um, and even some work references. Um, agencies and landlords also want proof of income. Um, essentially, the agencies may have a selection criteria, um, as will some landlords. Um, that will vary from office to office or landlord to landlord. So from a tenant's point of view, it's always uh, important to ask the question of what's expected of you and the information that you provide. Um, so have a chat with them about that as you're completing the application. Remember, you do not have to hand over your original driver's licence or photo ID or passports to an agent or landlord to keep. They only need to obtain a copy or cite the original to compare to that copy. So Nick, once I've completed all the application, gathered all my copies of my identification, my references and everything, and submit that to the manager of the landlord, what will actually happen next? 
uh, from there the agency or the landlord will process the application, um, checking the references and the information that you've provided. They'll also check tenancy databases to make sure you haven't been previously listing, um, as listed sorry, as a defaulting tenant, um, which is someone who may have left um, a previous property owing money or damaged the property in the past. So that's all part of that application process and the information you provide. Um, remember, with the agent or the landlord is looking for basic key factors to be met. Um, you are who you say you are, and you provide a truthful information about yourself and who you're going to be living with at the property. Um, you can afford the property um, and will pay the rent when it's due. You'll look after the property, keeping it clean and tidy. Um, you'll also respect the property, not damage it, and uh, not be noisy and disturb neighbours or have loud parties um, and things like that. Um, from an agent's point of view, talking to a landlord, an agent needs to be able to provide um, to the owner and likewise, if it's renting privately, an owner will want to find out enough information to prove that you have the, the ability to care for a property, um, as well as the ability to afford it. Once the application is processed, the agent or landlord will advise you whether you're successful or not. Um, most commonly, uh, agents process applications probably within 48 hours or two business days, um, but could be quicker depending on their processes. Um, they're under no obligation to inform you of the reason if you're not successful, um, so just be mindful of that as well. Um, if you are successful, uh, the agent or landlord will ask you to pay some money. Um, usually this is the first two weeks rent and the bond um, so, and get you to sign a complete tenancy agreement. Um, so that's part of that process. Remember you'll also need to connect electricity, gas, telephone, internet and uh, maybe responsible pay water bills during the tenancy. Um, and this is something you may need to ask as part of the application process to find out what your obligations are. Um, it is also your responsibility to make sure your own contents and personal belongings um, are adequately covered and insured as well. Remember a landlord or an agent cannot request that you pay an application fee. The only money they can request is a key deposit. So if you took out a key to inspect the property initially, that is then refunded when you return the key. You could also be asked to pay a holding deposit. You may also be asked to pay rent or bond money. There are laws about the maximum amount of bond that can be charged, so please see the RTA's website for more information. Take the time to read the terms of your tenancy agreement. Remember, it is a legally binding contract and it will be made up of your standard terms, which are set by the legislation, and then there are special terms. These could include things like your carpet cleaning or conditions that if you um, are allowed a pet. Remember, landlords and agents cannot put in special terms that are in conflict of our legislation. Note in the agreement will be the terms also about how you'll be paying rent and where it is to be paid. If you are renting a unit or a townhouse, there may be a body corporate bylaws that you will need to comply with. Or if you're renting in roomy accommodation, you may have house rules. Again, take the time to read what you're about to sign. Make sure you do get a copy of that agreement that you do sign. When paying any money to the agent or the landlord, make sure you do get a receipt. Any bond money that you pay will need to be lodged with the Residential Tenancies Authority and the RTA will send out an official receipt with a bond number to you. There are other very important documents required at the start of a tenancy and these include the Entry Condition Report. This report shows any pre-existing damage. It also shows what the condition of the property is about, whether it's clean, undamaged and whether the items are working. You should also receive a copy of the Form 17A Information Statement. It's a pocket guide for tenants. This outlines the rights and responsibilities for you as a tenant and where to go for more information. Remember, both parties involved in a tenancy have rights and responsibilities, whether you are the landlord or the tenant. Nick, what would be your top five tips for tenants applying for a rental property? Um, always important to inspect the property, making sure it's suitable to your needs and asking questions about the property um, and what's included and what isn't. Um, always knowing exactly what you'll be applying for and moving into. Um, making sure it's within your budget. Um, you've got responsibilities to pay rent on time during the tenancy, um, so making sure you're not going above your means or what you're wanting to pay is important. Um, reading the tenancy agreement or the contract carefully is something that um, I can't stress enough. Making sure you understand what you're assigning um, and again asking questions. Making sure you're very aware of your obligations as a tenant. Uh, be prepared. If the rental market is tight, you'll be competing with other people wanting the same property. Um, in instance, it's multiple applications, so you want to be uh, out above the rest to be chosen. Um, and remember, last of all, that you are responsible for your tenancy history, uh, so it's important to start off on the right foot there. Thank you for your assistance today, Nick. And again, thank you to our special guest, Nick Brown, from the Real Estate Institute of Queensland. Remember, if you need any information regarding Queensland tenancy rules, 
rights and responsibilities, contact the RTA or go to our website rta.qld.gov.au.